Thank you. So good afternoon, everyone. I'm glad to present you today our current work, what we do in continuum modeling of lithium sulfur batteries at the Helmholtz Institute OM. The Helmholtz Institute OM is a collaboration of those four um, German organization you see down in the footer, where our group um, belongs to the German Aerospace Center. So last year we presented at this conference a 1 plus 1D model um, for nanostructured carbon composite cathodes. Here uh, we referred to the sulfur encapsulation in meso and microporous particles and combine a macroscopic cell model with a particle model for um, reaction and diffusion processes to combine the cell performance with particle properties. So this model allows um, to investigate different sulfur loadings. We could uh, identify the limitations of the sulfur loading due to um, cyc yeah, cycling stability. We could identify additional transport limitations uh, due to the concentration inside of the particle and so on. And this part, uh, model is used as a, as a base uh, for further developments. And today I would like to present to you two different um, works we did. The one I presented, uh, will present in the beginning is um, about particle size distribution. So the effect that you have particles of S8 and Le2S and how they cycle, how they grow, nucleate, and are redistributed in the cell during cycling, and what's the effect on the cell performance. The second part of the talk will be about surface effects, so about adsorption, deservation processes, and what this means for the cell. So, like you all will know, that during discharge, the overall concentration of charged species increases. This raises the viscosity and the cell resistance. So for lithium sulfur, it can be expected that the surface effects might be more relevant than for other systems. So let's start with a part on particle nucleation. Here we apply the macroscopic cell model, um, which is based on porous electrode theory. We calculate mass conservation equation and charge conservation equation for the transport and the electrolyte, which is built of the diffusion part and a reaction part. The transport of the charged species in the electrolyte is described by a Nance Planck equation, while the reaction uh, is described with a Butler Warmer type of reaction rate. On the other side, we also you, um, calculate the charge conservation equation in the solid phase and the electrode. So what kind of charge species do we look at? This is a tough question, like you all know this, the kinetic mechanism is not quite clear for lithium sulfur, so we decided here, in this case, to take these five sulfur species from S8 to S, and to calculate, calculate for each of, um, of these species the set of equations discretized through the cell. So what's the aim of this work? Last year, Paul Shearing visited us in Ulm and showed us this very beautiful in Parando tomography data where you can see um, the, the sulfur particles shrinking and growing and redistributed in the cell depending on their size and their distribution. So we thought it would be nice to model this. So in addition to the macroscopic cell model I presented on the slide before, we here also calculate the particle size distribution N, or its probability density F. Um, therefore, you calculate the covered surface and the corresponding volume fraction from the integral over the probability density. Here we assume spherical particles for S8 and hemispherical particles for Le2S. The nucleation and growth is calculated from classical nucleation theory. This is something we already applied in the past for the precipitation and metal air batteries. Um, the nucleation barrier, delta G, is, um, has two contributions. The first one is a surface contribution with the surface energy, and the second part is um, a volume part where you have the solubility. So when delta G is above this delta G critical, what you see in this graph in the middle, you get nucleation. 
and then growth can occur, and this growth is limited due to the diffusion to the particle surface and to precipitation reaction. So we need some values for the surface energy, and we took this publication from Park et al, where they presented DFT data for different functionals, and we choose um, for S8 and LE2S the van der Waals values you see here in this list, to have the same functional for both species S8 and LE2S. But when you look at the deviation here in this, in this <coughs> table, and when you keep in mind that this surface energy is in the exponent of the rate, it's clear that this is a sensitive parameter for the study. So let's start with some results. Uh, here we have simulation results for electrode thickness of 50 micrometers and a starting particle size of 5 micrometers with an uh, overall um, sulfur lighting of 20 volume percent. Um, what you really nicely see on the left corner down there is how um, the S8 particles um, sh shrink in time and then dissolute. On the other side you see how the LE2S particles uh, grow with time, they get larger, they move up to the right side of the curve. Um, the cutoff voltage was set to 1.9 volt. This is something you get for the higher current simulation when the surface gets passivated. You also see this small little dip in the, in the curves when the surface gets free again. And further, you can also see that, that there are um, cycles for one and the first cycle and the tenth cycle, and you see that they are pretty lying above each other, so the process is highly reversible. This is due to the fact that we do not include any kind of degradation mechanism. So now I think I start some kind of conflict with Monica. <laughs> um, yeah, we also investigated the effect of the C rate to our model. So what you see there uh, in, the, in the graph above is the particle size distribution of the LE2S uh, at the end of discharge. And you see different lines for each color and the different lines are different discretization points in the cathode. So due to the fact that the cathode is kind of small, uh, in our simulation set, it's kind of homogeneous, so it all looks quite the same. And what you see is that uh, for higher current rates, we get smaller particles. And at the same time, if you look at the right graph down there, we get a surface preservation. So these particles build a film. And we think this fits really well <laughs> uh, to the REM pictures of REN. So when you look you have a very rough surface as C over 10 rate, and you get a very smooth surface at 2C, and we think this is something which we see here in the model too. Um, how I mentioned before, this, this, this surface energy is kind of a sensitive parameter for the study, so we also did a parameter study for it. And what you see here is that uh, not until we take the surface energy as one order of magnitude larger than this DFT data, we first get this nucleation dip. We think that this is an indication that the DFT data underestimate the surface energy, that it actually needs to be higher. For this high surface energy values, you get a supersaturation of the electrolyte. Um, on the other side, if you have a low surface energy, you just get a lot of small particles which are growing together, passivating the surface and causing this film. So at last I would like to show you um, a heterogeneous particle size distribution. Here we have again 20 volume percent sulfur loading through the cathode, but we have larger particles at the current collector and smaller particles at the separator. When you look down on these graphs, you see on the left side for a small um, C rate that at the end of discharge, you don't have any kind of particles anymore. You just have some large ones at the current collector if you look at the scale at the y-axis. And after the second cycle, everything is gone. On the other side, you have the same picture for a uh, higher C rate at the end of discharge. And there you also have no um, particles anymore, just a few at the current collector, but the scale is much larger, so there are a lot of more particles at the current collector, and you need more cycles to dissolute them. 
This is something you can also find in the discharge and charge um, curves up there. So if you look up there, you see that the, the solid lines um, for the, the low C rate get identical after the second cycle. So you really see this effect that uh, for the higher C rate, you need more cycles to achieve this. So we have some kind of connection between this particle size distribution and the charge discharge curves. So now I would like to, uh, yeah, that's the beginning, but not so important. <laughs> um, I would like to change the topic. So the second part of this talk will be about surface effects. So adsorption and desorbation. Our approach to describe adsorption and desorbation is to understand this as a step in the overall reaction mechanism. So when you look at this picture up left there, you see that when you want to have some kind of electrode reaction, you need to have some kind of step how you get the ion to the surface. Then you may have some kind of surface diffusion and then the actual reaction occurs. So this picture here is for insertion material, so don't be confused about this, this is something general. In every case where you have two conducting phases in contact, you will have some kind of mechanism. So we derived a theory to, de to describe this reaction processes at electrified interfaces. It's very general, so we can describe charge and electron transfer reactions. Um, published this in this paper, and the second one is uh, under review. Um, and it's based uh, on the idea that when you look at this absorption, it actually means that you get some kind of charge accumulation at the domain boundary. This charge accumulation at the domain boundary lead to further charge accumulation in the, now in this case, in the electrolyte and in the electrode to screen these charges at the boundary. This is something every one of you know in the case of liquid electrolytes. It's just the electrochemical double layer. So we use this picture of the electrochemical double layer with those charge distributions. So we have there um, specifically <coughs> adsorbed charges at the surface, what is commonly known as the inner Helmholtz layer, and we have countercharges in the electrolyte, and we have countercharges in the electrode. Now we use the fact that you can correlate charges to electric fields. When you have the equilibrium situation, you do not have any kind of electric fields in the bulk electrode or in the bulk electrolyte, but to skip this bridge at the boundary, you need to have some kind of local fields which are correlated to the charges at the interface. We model this, and we, we skip the spatial resolution and map them to 0D. This has the benefit that we do not have to assume any kind of structural properties of the double layer. We do not have to assume a thickness, we do not have to assume anything about it, what you may know from Guy Chapman, from butler Volmer, or anything else, they all have the same problem, that you have some kind of fixed thickness for the electrochemical double layer. This is something we think is pretty unrealistic if you want to describe cycling. So charge, discharge, why should it be the same? We skip this, map it to zero, and calculate this electric fields consistently, which allows us to deduce somehow an estimation for the thickness if we want to, but it doesn't matter really because we just calculate these, these electric fields, which leads to this stepwise process at the interface. So what do we calculate? We um, have the charge of the electrochemical double layer. This is the charge absorbed at the surface and the counter charges in the electrolyte and, and at the electrode. This is a rela relation to the electric fields and in the same way we also calculate the counter charges in the electrode and in the electrolyte. Here we introduce this uh, parameter alpha C, this is um, compensation ratio. So how much screening does take place in the electrode and how much screening does take place at the electrode. This is kind of a tough value in a way. I don't know if there's any kind of way to, to measure this. I don't think so. So we thought, do we get some kind of theory for it to describe it? And yes, you can. If you look at the interface and look at the stress, you can deduce that this alpha depends on the dielectric constants of the bulk phases. This model now has just equations for concentration and electric fields. So if you want to have a consistent set of equations which you can solve numerically, you need to have some kind of relation between the concentration and the electric potential itself. 
For this reason, we look at the change of the adsorbed charges induced by the electric potential. This quantity has the units of a surface capacitance. But it's not what you may know from textbooks. I know this looks like Guy Chapman or anything else, but this is not the case. Uh, if you look at this typical Guy Chapman definition, um, if you want to deduce it from, from theory, you will see that the potential which is written in this expression is actually the difference of bulk values. So it's not really physical to have a surface quantity which is related to bulk values. And on the other hand, you have a really simple way of the space, char space charge layer. So here we, we assume at least three space charge layers at the interface. And in the case of Guy Chapman, it's just two and quite unphysical, we think. This quantity allows to correlate the concentration to the electric potential. And if you look at the equilibrium situation, you will see that this surface capacitance is also correlated to the enthalpy difference between the absorbed state and the bulk electrolyte state. So it's kind of the solvation barrier. So it's a real physical quantity which you can measure. This model is coupled to transport equations, which could be any kind of system. So here we coupled it to the um, 1 plus 1D model. From the very first page, I showed you this macroscopic cell model. Um, this is coupled to this interface model and further coupled to particle, a particle model. We also <coughs> calculate mass and charge conservation and uh, assume this somehow reduced reaction mechanism from what you see here in yellow. And yeah, solve this numerically with uh, finite volumes. And this is a, what kind of a complex kinet interfacial kinetics you get there. So to discuss this in detail, I would need further 20 minutes, with, which I don't have. So I will just show you one, ex one result that you get some kind of idea what's the possibility of this model is, that we look at the effect of the surface capacitance. So the influence of this delta G, this enthalpy difference between adsorbed state and electrolyte state on the cell performance. So here you see that with very low capacitance values, you get some kind of overpotential shift. So you get some kind of transport limitation. And when you increase the surface capacitance, this transport limitation vanishes, and you get some kind of conversions. So if I increase the surface capacitance further on, it will all lay down on this yellow curve. It will not change anymore. This is something you can understand quite good if you know that the surface capacitance value is associated with the concentration of the adsorption layer. So if you choose the surface capacitance very, very low, this means you just allow a very low number of uh, atoms at the surface. And this is some kind of transport limitation. So you can't push your, your ions through this interface because it's blocked because of this value. So this is really a good example that you really need good enthalpy data to have a good model here. On the other side, you see that the actual reaction process is not influenced at all. So we don't interact with the reaction, we just interact with the transport through the interface. With this, I would like to sum up. I hope I showed you some of the results from this particle model and get you some kind of impression about what the adsorption model can do. And before I stop, I would like to point out this guy in the white shirt. This is Timo Danner. He did uh, all the work for the first part of this talk. And I would like to thank you for your attention. Questions? So my question is, is the driving force for nucleation uh, dependent on the potential of the electrode or not? Uh, um, it's just the equation I've, I've showed. So you just have this um, surface energy. Surface energy. Yeah, okay. it's so the surface it's energy constant. and you have some kind of part which depends on the solubility. 
So uh, I assume the uh, super saturation will be like a driving force for the nuclear. Yeah, issue. but you also have um, the the macroscopic cell model where you have the influence of the of the potential. So it's coupled. You it's just coupled. have classic classical nucleation theory coupled to, I would say, standard transport equations. So you just have this influence for the S8 species. Okay. Thank you. Um, on the second part of your talk, just, I mean, I had a question if nobody else is going to, uh, yeah, just, just being a devil's advocate in a way, um, you know, when you talk about surface capacitance and the adsorbance, you are looking in some senses at your concentration gradients at the surface. That's correct, yes. So aren't you not inadvertently packing thickness into that number? Because your ions are going to interact at a certain defined distance, right? Simply because yeah. ions are a finite size. Yeah. Uh, no, because we, we linearize this equation, so there yeah. is no thickness included. This is okay. something, the difference between okay. other approaches, I would say. Fine. Um, if we have no other questions, then I'd like to thank the speaker again. Um, we, we have a short tea break now, but we are going to...